I am creating this journal out of a K-cup coffee box, and I am hopeful that this journal is going to be the key to my success in keeping all of my thoughts organized for things that I want to experiment with, things that I want to do. If you're like me, you are constantly writing down little notes when you see techniques that you would like to try or thoughts come into your head of things you would like to create. And they're here, there, everywhere, little scraps of paper, little notebooks, mine are all coffee stained, and I want to collect them all in this book I'm creating. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I have a very eclectic channel. I experiment with a lot of different techniques, a lot of different mediums, and I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe, join me, and of course that notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. I also am going to do my best to get my blog moving in the right direction this year. You can find that over on my website at twoocrowsmixedmedia.com. My Facebook group and my Instagram are named the same. Let's get started on this project. I have a bunch of, of these K-cut boxes that I have already broken down. They're in different sizes, and I'm just kind of measuring what I'm starting with here. And it is five and three quarters in height and about four and a half inches in width. So that's going to be the size of the book we're creating. I want dividers inside this book. So I'm thinking through my thought process of what do I really enjoy working with? What do I want to kind of focus on in the new year? I know I like working with clay. The encaustic wax medium has become very enjoyable to me. I have an art journal that I've started, a uh, gel press. I'm always pulling my gel press out and doing a lot of things with it. And of course, journal construction. I like to look at different ways, Coptic stitch, different bindings, tab bindings, etc. And ephemera. To, I like to make my own, stick it down inside my, my journals, and of course, just random... DIY things. So those are what I've kind of decided on how I'm going to divide this book up to organize my thoughts. So I need to create the tabs to go inside. And I've just pulled out some file folders and I am taking that uh, piece of that K-cut box and just drawing on the file folder where I'm going to cut to include that tab. So we'll get those torn out, or get those file folders torn apart, and draw out where we want to cut that, pull out the Frisker's cutting mechanism, and we'll get those cut up and ready to utilize to create those tabs for this book. These K-cut boxes, you know, make a great cover. They're, they're very heavy construction, and I save them and break them down, put them into sizes, clip them with a binder clip, and I have them on hand when I get ready to do a journal. So now we have all of these cut and ready to go. So there is the basic skeleton of what we're going to do. In this particular video, we're going to work on getting the cover finished, just decorate it. Get the cover decorated, get it ready to go. So I'm trimming it up a bit. I think I took it down to a four and a quarter inch, just so those tabs would show. So I did go back and take a little bit off of that. And now I'm just going to scruff it up a little bit with a piece of sandpaper so it will collect my glue and water and I have this old book that I picked up that is falling apart. These pages are very, very brittle. They crumble in your hands if you're not careful and the best way to utilize them and preserve them is to glue them down and protect them with a, another coat of glue and water. So I make my own Mod Podge type product. It is a combination of glue and water 
I'll link the recipe in the description down below if you'd like to make your own. I find it a little cheaper. I buy the big, huge gallon jug of Elmer's glue and just mix it with, with a bit of water. And I, I don't know the proportion right now. That's why I'll link, I'll link the recipe in the description. So I'm just gluing these old pages on each side of everything. So I'm going to cover the covers. I'm going to cover each of these file folder tabs that I have for the inside. I'm going to glue them to the front, allow them to dry. Once dry, we have everything together. We have the fronts, the tabs, all coated front and back with the book page. I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper, just go around the outside edges and make sure any little frayed piece of paper is removed. I'm checking to make sure that everything is glued down properly. We have nothing that is loose, nothing that is frayed. Now to begin the decoration. So we're going to get the decoration completed for all the tabs, or the base decoration completed for all the tabs and the front and back cover. I have a bunch of different mandala stencils, and I'm going to pull those out. I'm going to use the same one on the front and back cover, and then I'm going to use a different one on each tab. So each tab will have something slightly different than the front and back cover. This is the front cover. I've taped the stencil down and I'm just dragging the texture paste through that stencil and I have stenciled half of that stencil on the front. I will clean it up just a bit here. There was a little spot that smeared so I've pulled my palette knife out to clean it up just a tiny bit. We'll set that aside and let it dry. Pull in the back and we are going to stencil the other half of that on the back side. Of the, of the covers. So we have the same mandala front and, or half and half front and back. Each individual tab will have something, a portion of a mandala slightly different and we'll get everything put together, set aside to dry and come back and we'll finish by decorating this front cover. We'll do the tabs in subsequent videos. So here we go with the front cover. We'll just take a bit of sandpaper and sand down any rough spots here. Get it nice and, and cleaned up. And I'm utilizing a raw umber. With that raw umber, I'm dragging it across the front cover with a hotel key card. So I'm just dragging the paint. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. Clean it up a bit with a little bit of sandpaper, and I'm going to drag the raw umber across the cover and then set that aside and allow it to dry. Just going to go around the outside edges with that raw umber as well to make sure that we have those nice and covered. Pulling in a, a paintbrush to just make sure that we don't have any of that cardboard glaring out at us when we pick this completed book up. So we want to clean the clean the outside edges, make sure they're nice and tidy, if you will. Now this is the back side of those front covers. I am lying a stencil across each and I have a cosmetic sponge and I am just picking up that raw umber once again and stenciling across both covers, front and back. And we'll let that dry. Now here are the two fronts, and it's time to pull in that second color. And I've chosen a yellow ochre, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pull that in with a hotel key card and just drag it across the front cover. 
And once that dried, I have this um, mint green texture paste. Uh, it's in a, I purchased it in a collection of um, rust, how to create rust. And it's just one, one piece of it, and it is a mint green. So I've just rubbed it. It's a real fine, sandy paste. Now, you could accomplish the same thing with some mint green uh, paint, acrylic paint, but I had this in hand, and, and I'll put a link on what that is in the description down below. I'll actually link everything I used. But I'm going to allow that to dry and just hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. And now I am bringing in my vintage photo ink pad and just going over the top of everything, hitting the highlights of that texture with that ink pad. And that was vintage photo. This one is a stays on black, and I'm taking it and dragging it around the outside edges and just getting a good outline on this cover. And there, we're starting to get finished. I want to attach this key to the cover as well. So I was just kind of placing that. Need to do some additional work on the inside. So let's take that yellow ochre and get that introduced on to the inside cover. So once again, just painting with the key card. We'll let that dry up a bit and then bring back a stencil and use the black ink pad to just add some noise, if you will, to the inside. And here we are with that fine texture uh, paste of uh, mint green. We'll hit that with the heat gun. Dry it up a bit. And then we'll come back with the sandpaper and just, you know, kind of clean it up a little bit. And there we go. Bring back the stays on black around the edges. And I'm starting to like how this looks. So let's decide how we're going to do this key. I've pulled out my um, craft pick or pokey thing, I guess. It's the retractable craft pick from Tim Holtz. Works pretty good. So I've punched some holes around the outside of that key. I just held the key in place and punched the holes. Now I'm pulling in a 20 gauge copper wire and I'm gonna sew that um, key to this cover and attach it with this copper wire. And how I did that, um, the first piece I just twisted the end so it wouldn't go through the hole and laid that down on top of the key, atop of the key, and then I just threaded from hole to hole around the key. Now I'm going back and just twisting that wire to tighten it up a bit. Now we'll make a, a little circle or a little loop and tuck that underneath the top of the key and that will hold everything in place. There. And now, I probably should have done this before I attached the key, but I've fallen in love with this Mod Podge hard coat. That is one Mod Podge I will always buy. This hard coat gives a really nice protective layer to particularly journal covers. I love to use it on my journal covers. So I'm going to use a paintbrush and just paint this on and I will try to get as much as I can underneath that key and then we will allow this to dry. It also gives a tiny bit of shine. It's not a gloss but it's just a little bit of what I would consider luster. 
So it gives just a tiny bit of shine. It dries clear, and I, I have a new fascination for this product. And so I purchased a couple of, couple of tubs of it. So I will always have it in stock. So I'm just going to hasten the drying a bit. Go back around the outside edges with that fine, fine sandpaper. <coughs> and there. Doesn't that hard coat add such a nice lean to the cover? And now let's do the same thing for the inside. We'll just hit it with a coat of that hard coat as well and allow that to dry. So that completes that cover. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did making it. And what I plan on doing is kind of breaking the creation of this book. It's kind of a big project. So I'm going to create, uh, break the creation down into bite-sized pieces. So in this piece, we kind of cr generated the skeleton of our book. In the next, we will decorate those tabs and get those tabs ready to go. So I hope you'll come back and join me. Really appreciate you being here. The thumbs up does help promote my channel, so I love it when you give me the likes. I like to read your comments. I always enjoy those, and I do respond to every comment on every video. So thank you very much, and I shall say bye for now.